Welcome back to the channel. I am really glad you're here. What does this camper and a Kubota B2601 compact tractor have to do with this video? Stick around and find out. Welcome to my cluttered garage. No, I'm really glad you're here. Yeah. One of the attachments I want to get for my Kubota B2601 is a set of pallet forks. And uh, they're a little bit pricey. I mean, as far as implements go, probably not terrible. What, like $700 or so? But at any rate, I am just not ready to get them. Um, I've seen the clamp-on pallet forks, and I, I really don't want to even spend my time with those. I know that if I get a set of pallet forks, I want the ones that are adjustable and are kind of standalone. But that's not what I got. So instead, I got a product uh, maybe similar to the clamp-on pallet forks, and it's this clamp-on trailer hitch. I thought with a set of pallet forks, you know, I could mount a ball on there or some come with a, a receiver and that would be handy for moving my trailers around. But since I don't have that, I, I was looking at this product on Amazon and um, it seems like it might work well. I have one really small, lightweight utility trailer and then I've got a pretty big RV. Uh, but I think I'll be okay to move it around just a little bit with this. So we're going to try that today. Hopefully not the uh, do anything that's uh, going to break anything or overload the tractor or the loader. So this product though is a clamp-on trailer hitch. It clamps onto the bucket of your front end loader and it cost about $65. It's made in China but I can tell you that it's bigger and heavier than I expected when I looked at the pictures. The welds are, are decent. I mean they're better than if I were to weld it together. So. So far, I'm pretty impressed with the construction of it. There's a little bit of assembly. You have to thread this rod in and put this foot on the bottom. After that, you just clamp it right onto your bucket like this. There were no instructions included, but I can only assume you'd want to make that as tight as possible. So once that's on there, you can put your two inch hitch in. I'll stick a pin in there. I mounted this one with the ball up because I think that the line of sight is going to be a little bit difficult, but that's it. The only problem I see with this is first of all, you're limited by the capacity of your bucket as far as strength and then you're limited by the lift capacity and you know we're out pretty far now but still not as far as pallet forks so I'm going to put a pin in here we'll hook up to the first trailer the little utility trailer and then we'll try the bigger one Well, that was a total miss. I can tell you that it's really difficult to see the end of the ball from the seat of the tractor. Um, I did curl the bucket back and I could see the end of the ball, but then when I dropped it to line it up, I kind of lost sight of it. So uh, I can tell it's gonna take a little bit of practice. Not terrible, but it is uh, a little difficult to see. All right, Dan, 
Let's drive around a little bit and see how it works. Mm-hmm. All right, Dan. I'm trying to keep my bucket level. First impression, I like it. Now, it's a little bit tricky, and like anything, it'll take some getting used to, but by having the ball way out in front of the tractor, when I maneuver it, it's almost like operating an articulated piece of equipment. You know, it's really, well, it is articulating, but, um, you know, when the tractor turns right, that trailer really goes far. So, uh, that part is a little bit tricky, but I think that's also really handy for maneuvering it. Like when you're backing in and you want to straighten the trailer up, you don't have to pull up and back in again. You just swing the front of that tractor around and that trailer tongue will go in either direction. So first impression is a good one. Uh, now let's hook up to the big mama and see if we can do that one. Now when I say big mama, this is really not that big of a camper. This is like a 25 footer, it has a dry weight of uh, about 4,200 pounds. The tongue weight is about 600 pounds. So it's really not a big heavy camper, but certainly a lot bigger than that little utility trailer. So my concern is, I don't really have a concern, but I guess the one thing that I would watch for is that uh, I wouldn't want to bow the front of my bucket. You know, you have all that pressure just on that area where you put that screw in, that, that uh, clamp that clamped down. So you're depending on the strength of the bottom of that bucket. So you're putting all that into one kind of pressure point. I don't like that so much, but I also don't think that it's gonna be that heavy for it. Certainly the lift capacity of the tractor can handle it. Uh, and what I wanna do is swing that camper around and have it facing the other direction. The reason I wanna use the tractor is because I'm gonna pull it up really close to the garage and I can't fit the truck in that spot, but the tractor is so much smaller, I should be able to maneuver it with the tractor. So it could come in handy for that if it works. I didn't see a lot of flexing in the blade of the, uh, of the loader, so I think that's going to be just fine. So let's move it around and see what happens. I'm going to keep this jack down pretty low, just enough so it doesn't scrape the ground. That way if I need to set it down quickly for any reason, I can just lower it and uh, get away from it. Well, 
I see this as a great opportunity for a drone shot. That went pretty well. It was a little bit sketchy backing out, or I guess you're pulling out. I'm back in the tractor with the trailers moving forward, but I could have used a spotter because I was just afraid that if I turned to the left, the rear end of the trailer would go to the right, and it was kind of close to the house, so I was being a little extra cautious. But uh, it didn't seem like it was too much for the loader or for the tractor. Um, I took it really easy and low gear. I used four-wheel drive to make sure I maintained traction. Uh, front and rear, and then I pulled it in place, and and it worked out exactly the way I wanted it to because I could never get the truck in this area, but the tractor was able to pull in there, and then I can back out. So I'm able to nose the trailer all the way up close to the garage. The reason I parked it in that direction is because I want the door facing the house. So if I had backed the trailer in, then the, the door would be on the other side, and I just didn't want that. So it worked out great, and I'm really happy. Well, thanks for joining me today. If you want one of those clamp-on trailer hitches, I do have an Amazon affiliate link down in the description. If you click on that, uh, it doesn't cost you any more, but it helps out the channel just a little bit. So check that out. Now I'm going to level this thing up off camera, and we'll be done. Another little afternoon project complete. So thanks for watching. I really appreciate you being here. If you like the video, please click the like button. If you haven't yet subscribed, I invite you to do so. Please join us on Monday evening at 7 p.m. Eastern Time for one of our live streams. They're always a lot of fun. And I look forward to seeing you next time. La, 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 la.